Hi, good evening, everyone. Welcome to another Learn, Grow, Invest session. Today, we're actually going to be going through the Q2 2022 results for Dollar Financial Services Limited. I'm joined here by Kadeen Mears, CEO of Dollar Financial. So he's going to be helping us go through the numbers. So usually what we do in this video is we break down the numbers, look at what the report says. Um, we usually stick to the context of that report, right? Because this is a quarterly review, not really the same as our stock review, which is um, a more comprehensive overview of the company. For this session, we're going to be focused just on the Q2 report. Now, since this company recently published an IPO, we made, you know, talk about the IPO a, a little bit to see if we are on track with some of the things that were promised. But for the most part, everything in, in terms of the session is going to be contained within the Q2 report. So if you have questions, post them in the comments. We'll get to a Q&A right after. So I'm going to go right into the intro and then we do some other you know, housekeeping before we get started. Learning is the key to successful investing. And who doesn't want to invest in some way? Here at Learn, Grow, Invest, we focus on financial education, all with the aim of sharing our knowledge on personal finance, investing and building wealth. We do this on the foundation of our faith in God. If a more holistic approach is what you need, check out our Grow Faith-Based Financial Coaching Program. Find out more about us at learngrowinvestclub.com and follow us on all social media platforms at Learn, Grow, Invest. All right, great. Uh, so before we start, I'd just like to open with a brief word of prayer here. Lord, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you that you've given us everything that we need for life and godliness. We thank you, Lord, that you, you've given us the ability to learn, grow, and invest as a community. We thank you for this medium that we're able to meet and discuss these matters. Give us knowledge, wisdom, and insight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, everyone, again, thank you for being here. Please take a moment to share the video, share it to your stories, share it on Facebook, share it on YouTube. But we're actually going live on multiple platforms today because I wanted the opportunity for persons to, you know, be able to see this discussion and benefit from it. So Kadeen, thank you for joining us. Um, you've, you've joined us once before, so I really appreciate you being here. No so but for your benefit and for everyone, I'm just kind of going to go through the format. So we're just going to talk about, you know, the highlights of the report. Uh, thankfully, uh, one of the things I liked about the report is that you gave us, you know, a page of highlights. So yeah. we'll start there and then we'll kind of break down the, the, the MDNA portion. I'll ask you to comment on some of the things that we would normally be speculating on because we wouldn't have you here to, to go through it. And then at the end, we'll take any questions from the audience. No Sounds problem. Good. Sounds good. All right, great. So let me share my screen. So. The first thing I'm going to say here is that we, anything that we discuss here, Kadeen and myself, is for discussion, education, and entertainment purposes only. And it's not to be construed as professional financial advice, solicitation, or recommendation to buy or sell any securities. If you wish to learn you know, whether or not dollar would fit into your portfolio, speak to a licensed financial advisor. Right? So Kadeen, you take us back a couple of months. Um, we would have gone through, you know, just like a month ago, you know, the IPO. Um, so you were able to, you know, be oversubscribed. Uh, so I wanted to, you know, give persons an insight as, as to what that process was for you. Maybe, you know, comment on what that experience was like. <coughs> some of the, you know, highlights about it. All right. Thanks, Jermaine. So, I mean, the the IPO process was a hectic one, I'd say. It was like a six-month sprint. I think we really started the process for an IPO around January. Of course, a lot of pre-preparation that took place, um, I'd say, the final quarter of last year. But, you know, in terms of conversations with regulatory bodies, you know, our brokers, our attorneys, that really started in January. And, um, you know, just leading up to us being approved, you know, by the FSC and us actually putting out the prospectus, preparing the prospectus was, uh, it, it took a lot of time, as you could see. I think it's a couple of, um, I don't remember how much pages it was, but I'm sure it's over 
over 50 pages. Um, so it was a it was a it was a tough period. Um, but as expected, as they would say, Jeremy, nothing that that's worth it comes easy. Um, so it's been a challenging period, but obviously it paid off. Um, we were successful. We were oversubscribed. We raised the capital that we wanted to do. Uh, we delivered um, in terms of our promise and what we said we were going to do post IPO. You know, we raised two hundred and fifty million dollars that would go into the business, and two hundred and fifty to pay off um, shareholders' debt. And um, I'd say the first month subsequent to that, we basically unlent that money in the market. So you'd see on the balance sheet and the, the quarter before that, our financials was at our loan book was at about eight hundred million there about, and now we're over a billion dollars. So that's that's actually some good progress on our side. Yeah. Um, so we we'll get to that part a little bit. <laughs> we'll get to that part. But um, so based on one one of the things that I was curious about about, and I'm sure some persons are as well. When you have you know an IPO that's oversubscribed by so much, don't you wish you had an opportunity to somehow you know capture all of that money that was you know there just left on the table? I mean, naturally. It would be good to be able to capture all of that money. But here's the catch. You never knew that you were going to raise so much money in the first place. So you couldn't plan on it. You know, yeah, so, true, true. I mean, if, if there was um, some form of um, something that was set in place for, you know, um, companies that IPO to do some form of subsequent raise, whether it's in debt or equity. I mean, there is, I've seen in cases where, Companies have done IPO and then they've uh, right after put out a pref share just to kind of, you know, capture some of that liquidity. But it's not a common practice. And at the end of the day, investors like the IPO, you know, <laughs> you know, not, not, not a lot of people like, you know, fixed income securities like a pref share. Or so that's giving up, yeah. you know, they like the upside that an IPO would bring. Um, and, and I guess that's what our market is really. Yeah, I'll I'll save the second part of our conversation for later because I know one of the things I'm definitely curious about is your demand for cash. So I don't mm -hmm. I don't want us to get into that yet. I want us to okay. get through the highlights, and then we'll you know have have a general you know conversation about it. So let's let's start to, to go through the numbers here. Um, so we mentioned at a high level that would have listed um, June 15th, um, you, you were able to get to an all-time high price in terms of share price of $3.60. Mm -hmm. And, you know, up to last week, right before your report, you know, came out, you'd have, you know, been hovering around 280. And then, of course, the report came out Friday and we saw, you know, at least uh, at a 5 to 6% gain today. So, you know, definitely investors seem, you know, to be happy about the results. Um, so this is just for everybody's benefit here, just at a high level. This information is on the Jamaica Stock Exchange website. You can get access to it at any time. I just wanted to give everybody a you know sort of overview here. So let's you know dig right into the the report. So what we have at the top is the highlights taken directly from the report. And what what I, I did here was added a table so that persons can put context to the percentage increases that you have here. Because when we see, for example, 176% increase, I want them to be able to see what that increase is from. It's, yeah, so it's been compared to the quarter last year. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that, that you can just kind of take us through each of these, these line items here. Um, you know, talk to us about the growth in, in, in interest income, you know, what, what it does look like in terms of transformation from last year to now. And just kind of take us through them one by one, if if that's okay with you. No man, that's great. That's that's no problem. So I'll just take them um, line by line and speak on like, the, the interest income. Firstly, um, so the six month ended June, um, our total total interest income was two ninety eight, as you see it there. Net income was at about two seventy three. I think when you compare our net earnings or our, our percentage of the total income compared to our net income, it's about 44% um, of, you know, our earnings compared to our income. Um, so I think that's a good margin to be making on the earnings there. Um, when you compare it to last year, as you mentioned, why why we see that 176 or that 218? 
It's because last year, this time, we actually did 108 in terms of, in terms of interest income. And year to date, in December, we did 376. So I think we're more trailing the end of year last year, um, mid-year this year. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's that's a that's a good indicator for because I mean when we IPO we IPO on the financials for last year, um, yeah. so persons would have bought in on that performance. So I mean it's good to see that you know as a company we're able to deliver and perform um, above the expectation, and and really satisfy the shareholders. Um, which which customer segment would you say attributed to, um, you know, lion share that gap? Um, I'd say most of most most of our loans are business loans. That's our strength. Um, that's our competitive advantage. Um, if you look at our, our our competitors, I mean, this is public information. You'd see that most of their loan book comprises of consumer based mm -hmm. loans. That's people that work in a nine to five salary deduction payday loans. Um, you know, and that's a really competitive space because when you go to payday or you go to give a three-year long-term loan, you're competing with commercial bank loans, which you know will give you lower margins. And lending institutions like myself, obviously, we have a higher cost of capital, so that really cuts back down into your margins. So it's very difficult to compete with a commercial bank who's unlending the depositors' money and giving the deposit deposit yeah. probably one percent, right? So no, I wonder one percent would be too much. Well, <laughs> point five or or zero percent on most of your yeah. accounts yeah. you know so so you know um what we've realized is that you know we have a niche and the niche that we have that market segment for micro small and medium businesses is almost untapped um because the commercial banks don't look much on those loans because they might think it's riskier yes they do they do they see yeah. them as very risky yeah, and I'd say they see it risky because a lot of times um, small, medium business owners, they don't keep good financial statements or they don't keep the books in order in a way yep. that it can be presented properly to a bank credit committee. So the strength that we have is that, you know, even though it might be a little bit more hands on, we would still go visit a business location, see what the traffic is like, see what if it's a restaurant, see what, you know, how much people are in the line, what's the average cost for our food. So we can easily do up our own financial statement for our business, cash flow to see, you know, how the debt service is. And of course, where collateral is available, we would use collateral. So um, that also helps with our delinquency. So you'd say that in terms of the business, um, the business side, as in business clients are growing at a faster pace because you do consumer loans as well. It's just not your focus, right? Correct. We do it. Um, I think if you look back on the on the highlights um, that were sent out, um, I think consumer loans. I'll, I'll pull it up shortly, but the uh, majority of it here as well. In, in case if, if if you remember where it is exactly, I could go to it. Yeah, I, had, I, don't I, recall had, seeing I, that. I posted it on my my Twitter, so I'll just okay. pull it up here so that we're. Right, let's try and find it here. Um... Yeah. So so basically, most of our loan book um comprises of secured business loans which is about 66 percent and then we have unsecured loans which is about eight percent so in terms of personal loans which would be unsecured and unsecured is classified as salary deducted loans for uh, example um that's about 20 21 percent of the total loan portfolio so okay. so i have what i have is this that was in in the prospectus prospectus right yeah. So you'd, you'd realize that um, secured loans, is in, in terms of the, the quality of the loan book, it has increased um, for the quarter up to about 4% in terms of the total amount that is secured. Now, yeah. what we classify as secured um, loans are really loans that are secured by motor vehicle or property. So okay. that's it. So you won't find, for example, equipment falling under secured, even though we might take we might take um, other unconventional items as collateral based on the ability to resell. Um, mm -hmm. It's not categorized under um, secured. Okay, okay, fair enough. Okay, all right. So, I, um, yeah, I don't, I remember it being referenced here in the highlights, but mm -hmm. I don't recall if there being a, a graphic or anything shown about it. So, 
Yeah, it was it was posted on my it was posted on on the Twitter on my Twitter um page. Okay, okay. Um, so okay. for persons right. who follow me on Twitter, they can definitely okay. see a couple highlights. Let's, let's look for that real quick. Then should shouldn't take me long to find one second. All right. All right. So we do have a question in the chat that I'll just post in the meantime. No problem. Matthew is asking um, any profit targets for the end of this FY. Um, I, I, yeah, we do have profit targets um, based on our, 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 our budget. Um, so that's a yes. In terms of what the profit might be, your guess is as good as mine. You can look at the, <laughs> you can, you can always look at the run rate of a company and it, it, it can be safe to say, especially if you're, if our expenses remain flat or frozen over a period and the income remains the same. I guess you can assume what the, the 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 net profit or the profit might fall at at the end of the financial year. Um, if there are any you know major events that happen that could either you know increase that as well, increase or decrease. That it was something that I was going to ask you as well because I noted an increase in the in in the um, yeah, admin expenses. expenses. So yeah, man. So I'll get yeah. there in a sec. So. Um, I found the image, so let me share that. Um, this is what you had shared on your Twitter page. Correct. So this would be an updated version to what we saw in the prospectus, right? Correct. Correct. Okay. 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 All right. So, so the move to 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 secure it is there? Is it that? Is it that you are targeting more secured, or it just happened to work out that way? What's it? Is it? Is it something that you're trying to narrow the? unsecured to a certain percentage what's what's so, the so yeah what 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 prior to covid our loan portfolio would have been very similar to our competitors say one to seven in terms of um business to consumer loans mm -hmm. um but no obviously we have more consume um we have more um sme loans um we have more business loans than we do have um consumer loans before yeah. covid it was the reverse now, what COVID taught us was, you know, in terms of diversification, you know, building out the loan book um, to mitigate risk and ensure that if there are any, you know, economic shocks, whether it's a pandemic or a recession, that at least, you know, the business can withstand the effects of, of those shocks, uh, whether macro or micro. So that's, that's kind of when we kind of turned around in terms of our strategy, kind of did the opposite of what our competitors were doing focused on the business loans, focused on a lot of growing, growing mm -hmm. micro businesses. Sorry about that. So we'll ask Kadeen for a second. Oh, are you, Let me are know you if you can me? hear me because I'm actually not sure if it's my internet. Well, I'm hearing you, but I'm not sure if you're hearing okay. me. Okay, okay, okay. Come on. I think, I think we should be fine. Oh, that was only for a minute. Yeah. So we kind of right, just so we um, re-strategize post-COVID. So that's what led to the the... the you know how the how the loan book thing is structured secured versus unsecured business versus consumer loans okay 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 got you all right so um let's go through with the the rest of the highlights here as i said i was interested to understand from from an expense perspective um was this mm -hmm. you know addition to the team it it's pretty much would have doubled from from last year till now well i mean closely it's they have 83 percent here but, um, you know, talk to us about that. I know that there was word about another location in Portmore. So yeah. is it in, in preparation for that or is other persons you've added to the team throughout the year? So, so um, um, you don't have it up here, but in the, in the quarterling on the unaudited um, income statement, it will mm -hmm. show actually, you know, the total um, operating expenses quarter over quarter. So there, there was an increase um uh, there there was an increase so if you compared uh, i'd say january february march um numbers um yeah so where, where they are now right so up until march it was at about um what are you seeing there 125 no it's total well for march march um we're talking about the expenses right yeah, 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 yeah. The expenses. So there, there, there was an increase quarter over quarter. So what led to that really was that 
we had some expenses um, from the IPO in the quarter, which okay. could not be capi capitalized then. So you couldn't deduct it from the amount that you raised in the IPO, which is very typical okay. for us to okay. do. Um, because it probably would have fall. Accounting rules wouldn't allow you to categorize it, right? Um, okay. As well as there would have been staff expenses, um, particularly, and I think we had mentioned it in the notes, um, expenses relating to um, staff bonuses that were paid. So mm -hmm. based on the performance of last year, we had paid some bonuses to the, to the team members um that so would have bumped those up. bonuses were paid in 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 q1 or q2 they were paid in q2 okay okay right so a lot of those a lot of those expenses were were unexpected per se mm -hmm. um so a lot of evaluations probably were done late um based on the ipo obviously um things were prioritized so those were some one-off um expenses both from marketing expenses and some staff expenses okay so, so the, what can be expected for next quarter is that it will kind of um um dip back to kind of where it was before it to, to, to this figure or, correct okay 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 that that was that, that was going to be my question okay. yeah be, because right. when you mention branches the truth is the cost to build out a branch is very minimal um i mean the capex is probably like a million 1.5 to build out a branch and then the staff cost is probably like um, 500 to 700,000 per month it's because, it, you know, it's, it, everything is centralized. So it's not like for each branch, you're going to have to build out an HR and an underwriting. Basically, you just need administrative and salespersons. Okay. So branch build out and expansion, there's no big cost that you'd see in a big movement in, um, in, in the expenses. And also... With branch build out, what you find is that your income also increase because these sales officers will be bringing in loans, so the income would would also match the expense and 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 at some point be greater than the expense. Okay, so that bonus that you paid in Q two is it? Uh, I mean, don't need to get specific here, but is mm -hmm. it that? Is it? Yeah, are bonuses paid once per year or it's every every couple so, so of just months? like so no 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 so just like every other company what happens now is that at the end of each year you do you do like your um what you call is like your performance evaluations yeah, and yeah. stuff like that so what happened with us is that a lot of that was pushed back because okay. of that six month race to get the ip out of the way because ah, we so, needed so normally it's done in q1 but you had to push it correct back to q2. Okay. exactly because what happened is our team is very, very, um, you know, it's not that it's, we, we operate very lean, mm -hmm. right? So what you find is that when we call for all hand, hands on deck to meet a, a deadline for an IPO, um, no, and nobody's focusing on their bonus at that point. Everybody's just mm -hmm. focused on, you know, so that was kind of what um, kind of bumped up the expenses uh, along with some other expenses relating to, um, marketing and um, you know promotions etc. Read the IPO. Okay, okay. So so one of costs that we're not likely to see again, and then so maybe for Q3 we'll see a little bit closer to what the current salaries will look like in terms in terms of the overall admin expense, not just salaries, but every everything related to operating expenses, right? Correct. Right, correct. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. And I mean, we see the profit before tax here. Um, you do have the benefit of being on the junior market now. So you're going to be paying, um, you're, you're going to get that tax break for the first five years. Um, the point, point to note, Jeremy, is that um, we won't be getting it for the first five months. We won't be <laughs> for the first couple of months. Um, that will also be prorated on tax. So we'll get the tax oh, okay. benefit um, the, uh, upon listing. Okay, okay, okay. So, so, so then we'll start seeing that next next year this time. Is that no, 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 no. So, so basically, what I'm seeing saying is that January, February, March, April. Ah, yeah, man, yeah, man, yeah, man, yeah, man. I understand, I understand, I understand. Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. Um, let's move on to this next one here. So you mentioned. Uh, let's let's talk about the loan portfolio, and this is where I wanted to kind of get your insights now. So the current portfolio is 1.05 billion my my guess is that with the one of the benefits we spoke about in our last session was you know the 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 marketing and awareness that the ipo built for you so 
my my guess is that you have a high demand for loans right now what does the growth of this loan portfolio you know what what is it projected to be maybe over the next six months like what what can we maybe look to see this figure at for q3 or even at at the end of the year uh, well um put it this way um Jermaine, it's your loan when we grow the loan book so fast right what happens is that we're going to need more cash um, to continue growing. So if you look at our balance sheet, I think we had like $80 million um, on our balance sheet. Yes, about eight hundred. Um, and, and that includes like our cash reserve and, you know, um, just, you know, money that we would have put, put aside for liquidity risk, et cetera. Um, so what you find is that in order to continue to grow the loan book at the rate of the demand, um, we would have to, you know, raise some more capital just to continue to grow because we we raised 250 right um in terms of cash that came to the company out of the 500 and within the first month we were able to unlend i'd say probably all of that money mm -hmm. you know so so that goes to show that we can easily lend between 100 to 200 million dollars each month and as you said you know the ipo the marketing and the brand awareness that was brought about by the ipo that really is driving a lot of demand um so so we definitely want to grow with the rate that the demand is so we're just considering you know different ways how we can continue to push okay so in terms of um so your i believe i asked you this as well last time when 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 somebody takes a loan mm -hmm. um i think i'd ask you about the average loan duration so if we have 1.05 billion out now and we don't and, and and you're not able to do another loan when do you expect to to re, to recover all of this current money is it in six months is it nine months is it 18 months what's that so, so basically basically if the average loan time is um say say nine months mm -hmm. Um, that would be saying that in nine months we could collect about the billion yes. dollars yes. in theory, right? Yes. So if we're working, say, a billion divided by nine months, that's like, um, one, that's a hundred hundred million coming in. A hundred million a month, correct. Yes. Yes. So if, if we don't raise any more capital, we will only be able to lend a hundred million each month. Yes, that, that's, that's a number that I wanted to kind of get. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, it's not maybe as as realistic as that as that. Yeah, just kind of yeah. using a very very yeah, because you have amount. early repayments and you'll also have late repayments right yes um yes. but 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 the key thing is <laughs> the even if the demand even if the, the the we were able to collect 150 million in repayments per month the demand mm -hmm. is about 250 per month okay so so the last thing that you want Jermaine, is is for somebody to come in and come in to borrow money and you know you have to tell them that hey we lend out all the money you know so strategically we have to look out for those risks those liquidity risks and be strategic to ensure that while we are growing you know we, we stay um liquid so any any plans here to maybe take advantage of like a credit facility because in that case if i come in for a loan tomorrow and i need it because uh, one of the things you mentioned is the speed at which you try to deliver loans so mm -hmm. let's say i need a hundred million and i you know give you the evidence that you need do you have a credit facility or someone we do. Can work so, so the good the good thing is that we have we have line of credits um with our bankers so at any moment uh, we can always draw for those line of credits obviously mm -hmm. put us in a negative cash flow position but the key thing is always to deliver to the customers for us um and then the, re the the cash inflows will solve the problem yeah um, so it's really about balancing that debt now because if since it is line of credit it will require you to pay interest on it whereas if you had your own cash at a lower cost then it would be more profitable for you correct correct okay, okay. all right all right cool so um assets are growing um so I mean, everything for you really is is really brought down to your cash, and I know you don't. I mean, assets otherwise for you is is really centered around that, right? Uh, I right. Don't really see much well, otherwise. Yeah, yeah. Outside of that, it'll be just like you know, equipment. Um, you know, um, what we call PPE. 
and we don't have any property. Um, so most of our asset lies within our loan portfolio. Yeah. Um, as you can see there, um, total assets is about 1.1 1 .1, um, billion and our loan book is um, a little over a billion. Um, so most of yeah. our, the, the business model is always to, you know, borrow to unlend. Mm -hmm. um so that's the main thing um you don't want to acquire use your cash to buy a building when you can unlend that money to increase your yeah. earnings yeah okay okay all right so talk to us the final thing that's what i'd want to talk to you about here is this um management of of expected losses so you have a you have an expected credit loss um here are five percent and the non-performing loans if somebody is just now learning about dollar for the first time, um, mm -hmm. you know, explain those two concepts to them. Um, and how do you try to manage the, the, the non-performing loans side of things? All right. So just to, for clarity, then in, in the ease, in an easy sense of the words, non-performing loans are typically loans that are passed like 90 days. Once it hit 90 days, those, those loans automatically don't, accrue any interest anymore um, in terms of um, expected credit loss which is kind of similar as an indicator of to you know how the loan the, the quality of the loan portfolio expected credit loss or ECL is a form of provisioning but it takes into consideration a lot of other factors including the economy um, including if a loan is secured or unsecured um and it, it's a lot more technical to arrive at this um ecl provisioning versus just saying oh the loan is at 90 days so um it's non-performing um so so those are the two two main things that are used to really assess the, the quality of the loan book for our industry um you know the expect the expected credit loss or non-performing loans is at about 12 to 15 percent and based on what our competitors are doing. So we're doing significantly better in terms of our uh, the quality of our loan book. Actually, we're more in line with the, the commercial banks in terms of our non-performing loans. Okay, okay. So even though it gets to that non, non-performing stage, you're still trying to recover it. Correct. Um, it's that when you get to that point, you're going to you know, say it's non-performing, non so there's an understanding that there's a risk that you won't be able to recover that the longer it goes into the Correct. Future. Not only that, but you're not earning any money on it, and it's just sitting on the road. You know? Yeah. So, 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 you so, 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 as, so when you say not earning on it, and I know, mm -hmm. I know typically there is either late fees, penalties, things like that. Is it that it's incurred but you don't expect to recover it how does that normally work um so so you won't be earning any interest on it and um in terms of the late fees um you 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 call it the late fees um once the late fees are added to the loan portfolio it will be accrued um okay. and realized when a payment is made okay okay mm -hmm. All right, thank you for that. So what I wanted us to do next um, is kind of go into just, I mean, it, it's been a little over a month. <laughs> so just to kind of look at uh, the price history in terms of the JSC. This is something that we normally do as well. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, closed today at, at 295. I know one of the interesting things you've said is that um, you, you see that you, you see your company as a long-term investment. So right. I mean, how, how do you feel about the overall performance? Um, is it how, how, how do you normally you know, think about this? So it, it's, it's not even to comment on the price per se, but mm -hmm. I'm always curious to, to find out how, how CEOs think about their, their share price. Is it something that you try to um, not necessarily manage, but is it that you try to be well, just, just tell me your thoughts on it. Let, let me say it that way. All right. So, so, so I'll tell you my personal opinion on stock prices, right? So you have two former investors, how I see it. You have investors that invest for the long term. These are normally people who focus more on the dividends. And the dividends will be a reflection of your earnings or your net earnings. And the dividend policy will determine how much money that you get paid out as a shareholder based on the amount of units that you hold. So you have investors that hold and invest like that, like a Warren Buffett, for example. 
you know, they don't get up and watch a stock price to see, you know, where it is. They want they worry more about the performance of the, the company. Then you have persons who invest based on stock prices who they'll go into the market and they'll buy and they'll flip a stock. They're more like day traders, right? So nothing is wrong with it. It's just your investment um, technique or, or what works for you. For me personally, I'm a long-term investor because I've seen far many two times or far many too many times where I personally am invest in a company and then I make an upside and I sell it. Three years later, I'm like, why did I sell that stock? You know, <laughs> because it's like somewhere that I never imagined that it would have been, you know. Yeah. And imagine buying like an NCB stock like back in 2000, early 2000s and holding it and seeing it you know, where it is today, you know. Even though it's 15 years later, you know, <laughs> seems like a long time, but some you have to have a mix of your portfolio that you, you buy and hold. As, as a lot of, like a Michael Leachin would say, buy, hold, prosper. Um, you know, once it's paying a good dividend, then it's, for me, it's a good stock. Um, well, it's, it, it, it's, it's interesting that you'd say that because currently you don't pay a dividend. So is right. it that you're I mean, heading early stage, is that, that's early your overall stage. strategy? It's, it's, it's early stages, bro. I mean, <laughs> just... Yeah, but it is. It is <laughs> I'm just, I, I just wanted to say that part because I kind of hear somebody asking that question. So since you mentioned yeah. your, your, your personal investment strategy, it, it mm -hmm. is not far-fetched to think that may, maybe that's how you kind of envision dollar growing into to be able to one day pay a dividend to its shareholders. And for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. And of course, not to say, but our stock price is very important to us. Hence why you'll see, you know, we ensure that we put out our numbers early. We don't wait until 45 days or right in that, oh, sorry, the numbers are late. I think it's very important for the numbers to be presented to the shareholders so that they can make their financial decisions early and know exactly the direction that the company is headed in. Um, so, I mean, as you said today, the information is out, the stock price trended up. Um, so I guess that's an indicator of, you know, just how the confidence that people have in the stock now. Yeah. So um, you just kind of, I'll share it again for everybody to see. So, um, I mean, price has been after that. So it's normal, um, you know, for those who are unaware, it's normal for IPOs once, once listed to have a little bit of a run up. I believe that's what we're seeing here. And then some amount of correction now nobody knows when the correction will come but there's always a slight correction right stock prices don't only go up since that minor correction though the price has been holding steady um around the 280 mark as i said and then you know today it, it made its way to about three dollars and then settled at 297 so i mean it it's from 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 a month perspective you know being 200 percent up from ipo is is not a bad place to be Right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so and and it's good. I mean, it's good, Jermaine, for I feel good to know that, you know, we had 14,000, you know, shareholders and people yes, are able yes. to take profit. People are able to be happy about the stock performance. Uh, there's nothing wrong with taking profit, you know, and uh, for the persons who buy and held on, um, I'm sure that their rewards will be great as well. You know, so. <laughs> The key is to always invest in a company that you understand and always, yeah. you know, you know, I, I personally will buy Apple stock because I have an Apple computer or, or a Netflix stock or, or stocks that are simple and easy to understand. If you yeah. see our billboards, all it says is that we lend. So our business model is very straightforward. We lend money, we collect fees and interest income. And it's a very easy business model for our shareholders to really absorb. So I guess... As we continue to grow, the, the stock price will be a re reflection of the growth. And when you invest in a company, you, you buy into the future value of the company. So um, I, I guess if we're, we're going to be continuing to grow, then I guess the stock price will grow as well. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. So there are some some points that I kind of took out of the, the notes that I wanted to talk to you about. So I kind of spoke about the IPO already. You mm -hmm. mentioned in the report a partnership with BM. Tell us about that partnership. What is expected in that relationship with them? Um, I, I see, I see you smiling. Tell, <laughs> tell me as much as you can tell me. 
<laughs> but it was said in there, so I think I can ask you about it. Uh, everything that's here is what you can ask. Here. You have a right. You have a right. You have a right. You're a shareholder, right, Jeremy? <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, we've we've engaged VM, you know. Obviously, if we raise two hundred and fifty million dollars and it's you know it's already at work, we need more capital. Then we have to engage, you know, our financial partner to figure out what's the next step in terms of, you know, continuing the growth and 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 actually meeting the demands that the business is now seeing due to being a listed company as well. So that's really why we engage them. So as soon as that, you know, the, the decisions have been made, of, of course, we communicate it to JSC and it will be there for everybody to see. But, you know, we're a company, just like how we deliver our, our financials early and we're a young company, we don't take long to announce things. So you'll you'll hear in well, short I mean, again you know as i said it it was right there so <laughs> as, i was just commenting on the fact that it's right there so i mean it it let me let me just kind of give persons an understanding of the scope of what was said so it says here um this year dollar has officially onboarded vm wealth as our corporate financial advisors vm VM Wealth Management is a premier provider of wealth management, security trading, investment advisory, and corporate solution services. We are confident that this relationship will propel the growth of the company as we are confident in VM's sound advice and expertise. So that's what was said. It kind of alludes to some things um, being, being at play there. Um, so, I mean, one can only start to speculate some of the things that will come um and we spoke about some things that i mean i know you probably can't confirm but i'm kind of seeing the dots connect already so that's all i said i just wanted to kind of make it clear and just have you comment on it yeah you, no problem you're able to so those those are my comments <laughs> <laughs> and there was also let me actually share something else with you here um mm -hmm. so one of our members shared this article i don't know if you're familiar with it so i see inside the article article on Friday, there was a line that was stated here that, that they understand that, you know, you've lent out all your funds and are preparing to float a billion dollar bond to facilitate expansion. I don't know if you can confirm. I've, I've, never, read, I've never read that article. I'm just, I'm just seeing that article now, actually. So, so can you confirm or deny or, or you want to plead the fifth? You know, you know what I like about your program? You know, I'm I'm from a Christian background, so you don't mm. want to put me in a position, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, uh, that's why I'm saying you can say no comment, um, and then whenever <laughs> you hear it from you, then you know we'll work yeah. with it. All right. Yeah. Um, okay, so so let's let's go back to this. So you you mentioned that you know as soon as possible you will make some announcements in terms of your partnership with VM. Correct. Can you speak to the partnership with with, with RT and RT. Yeah, so, so basically what we've been seeing is an increase in demand for persons that, you know, have, uh, who want to go like hybrid in terms of solar panel we've been getting. So what we did was we partnered with RTA because they provide an install. We needed a partner where basically in short, um, somebody can come, the JPS bill is $30,000 a month. They can come and they can make a payment to us of $15,000 borrow some money, install a panel, cut their, their electricity costs almost to zero. And, um, you know, we have the experts that will ensure that it is installed. And worst case, if we need to uninstall it, they're also our partners. So um, that's kind of what the partnership was about. Okay. So is it is it an exclusive partnership or you're allowed to work with other similar no, providers? No, we, we, are, we, we are allowed to work with other providers, not exclusive, but it's the start of, you know, we're about sustainability as well, even in our lending. And, you know, we're big on, you know, green energy, the environment and all of that. So um, strategically, it was a good way to put us, ourselves in that category as well, because a lot of people talk about it, but they don't do it. So... Uh, we really wanted to find a partner and see how many people we can help um, to, you know, get green energy. Okay. 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 So, 
what other types of partnerships may may you be looking at right because i um i figured that because this is a partnership is it's it sort of like when customers come in they refer you get a business etc so it's not right. like um are there any type of other ways you see yourself you know potentially partnering or you know anything i mean we have we have other work? we have other partnerships in different segments like oh this is in renewable energy space we have partnerships in the medical space just the same way with our mm -hmm. medical where we partner with orthodontists and um, doctors who who do cosmetic procedures and stuff mm -hmm. so we have different partnerships in different industries even in the bpo space as well um we're probably one of the larger lenders in that space so for us it's all about identifying the industry finding the persons who are leaders in the industry partnering with them see how financial services and financial inclusion can actually help to grow their industry okay 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 all right um so let's talk about that you know so have us you know give us an understanding of how things have been trending there um you mentioned in your report looking to expand there as well let me see if i can can quote you <laughs> so dollar mm -hmm. guideline is seeking to expand its footprint stepping outside of georgetown to capitalize on lucrative opportunities arising from guyana's rapidly growing economy okay mm -hmm. so so we opened the first location we've been incorporated for about two two to three years um but we actually got a chance to open location after the pandemic um at around summer last year and since then it took us about six months to break even and uh, grow the loan book to a point where it's self-sustainable so right now dollar loan book dollar Guyana loan book is at about 130 140 million Guyanese dollars which which works out to like 100 million Jamaican and okay. uh, basically the profitability of Guyana Guyana is profiting roughly 12 million um Jamaican equivalent per month okay so so there there that's a, actually a very good if you annualize that that's a very good number for them okay. um in terms of their performance, it accounts about nine percent of our overall profits. So um, Georgetown, which is the the capital, has been um, very good to us. Um, we've been traveling around. Guyana is like seventy times the size of Jamaica, although most of it might be undeveloped. Um, but there are other towns like Burbies and, and and some other places that we I personally have visited. Um, smaller town villages where they definitely need some form of financial inclusion and we can see where microfinancing can actually help to grow these communi these communities which might be distant from the capital so um we, we're really excited about that okay any timelines for that that expansion is it within this fin this financial year as you know once we raise capital once once we once we raise capital we're back at work again you know okay. so so you know the the main thing is when you open a new branch or enter into a new jurisdiction um you always want to have the capital um to unlend when the demand comes so what we try to do first is to always to raise the capital first um while we strategically move into new territories or open new branches okay 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 all right and Finally, we have here, well, in terms of my questions, really, um, mm -hmm. business and portfolio outlook for maybe the, the rest of this, this this financial year, just any any high level comments or thoughts on, on that? What can we expect in terms of, um, you know, the remainder for the year? Anything that, you know, you're allowed to, to tell us in terms of expectations, um, you know, lots of things in terms of what you would have, we saw where you would have, you know, unlend the funds that you got in the IPO already, but what's next? Mm -hmm. What can we look forward to in the next few um, months? I mean, the next couple of months is always about being strategic. Um, new products, definitely we'll be launching some new products, um, new branches, um, you know, new jurisdictions. That has always been said, has always been in our pipeline. Um, you can always look for us raising capital, raising some more, whether it's debt or equity. Um, 
that's always a part of our business model. Um, our balance sheet is very strong in terms of debt to equity, as you can see, we're about 700 million in equity. So um, you can, we can always leverage that up a little bit more to get some debt to unlend. So you can see us, I mean, strategically, um, we as a management team make the, the proposals to our committees and then it's brought to the board um our, our committee and board they, they move very very um quickly you know in terms of decision making so in the next i'd say next month to in this quarter at least um you'll see you'll definitely see some of the 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 movements in terms of strategic plays um not much i can say but it will be definitely around you know just raising more capital yeah. and new branches and and probably new jurisdictions so that's what we're working on okay okay so i'm just bringing up the map here you had a map in the prospectus about your uh, how we are set up in jamaica i know it may be yeah. a little bit hard to see so for now um this is showing seven locations in jamaica yeah and then you're at your you're, you're expecting to have one well, more well we have we have two in montego bay actually um so, bay, so okay. yeah so it would bring it to eight so as soon as okay. the portmore location is open um we would actually have um nine locations and then one in guyana which make it 10. um okay. we, we are scouting locations um one of our shareholders um gave us some some um ideas for new locations which we're following closely on twitter so we're actually looking to those places to see how, how best we can open some new locations um, because the our business model is always to build relationships through branches. Um, so we like to have the branch presence. Okay, okay. All right. Um, so I'm going to stop sharing for a second. I think, um, well, everything that I wanted to kind of touch on at a high level, we were able to cover. Just gonna kind of scroll through my notes here quickly. I think we got it. Um, so we're gonna take some questions from the audience now. So I'm just gonna bring it up on the screen. I think you should be able to see it as well. Mm -hmm. um, so Matthew asked the first question. So we got that one already. He was also asking, you know, how many new customers um, since IPO? Are you able to give us that? Like yeah, number? sure. Um, it's about ten percent. It's about a ten percent increase in terms of new new customers um, since IPO. Okay, but I can tell you in terms of loan applications, it's probably like if we were getting a hundred, we're probably getting five hundred now since the, wow. since the wow. <laughs> so that's significantly greater. Um, but what this does is it gives us a pool of a lot more loans to choose the best loans from. Okay, um, so there's okay. been like a 10% increase since. Okay, great. Uh, Derby is asking any plans to purchase Access Financial in the future? Well, that's a, that's a, um, no, we, we're, we're always looking for acquisitions, <laughs> you know. So once, once it fits well into our business model, you know, mm -hmm. um, we, we always look for possible acquisitions, not necessarily for that financial institution, but for any. Yeah so so yeah um we're definitely looking for opportunities especially um when we have um capital on hand to do these acquisitions okay so i know there was a mention around the ipo time about the micro credit credit act where you no know, a lot of the smaller companies will have to be regulated and there are some kind of expectation that not all of them will be able to manage the cost of regulation so there may be opportunities for buyout but considering your capital state, you know, capital is that demand. That thinking about is it, you know, something that it, it has to kind of fall into your lap first, or are there, you know, companies that you're looking at already? You know, what 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 can you say about that? We we have looked at companies in the past, um, but I'd I'd put back a question to you, Jermaine. If if you can organically um, unlend two hundred million dollars in a month and there's a loan book to acquire for $200 million, what would you do with the $200 million that you have? Okay. Well, I mean, uh, yeah. It all depends, right? 
probably they yeah. have an, a network probably they have you know yeah i was gonna say uh, i'd be thinking of things like you know what's a customer base is it similar to mine or there are opportunities for me to expand maybe have some different class of customers than i have now is it right. 200 million now but can it be 500 million in six months yeah. those kind of things so yeah. it's always strategic so it's not just about just buying the loan portfolio because it comes up for sale it has to yeah. has to make sense strategically um so as you said um the the new legislation will enact some form of consolidation and or sell-off and we just want to make sure that we're in a position to take full advantage of that when it comes which i expect okay. will happen probably if not the end of this quarter early final quarter um yeah. you know based on you know where boj is right now okay okay all right daman is asking would you be opposed to issuing preference shares to raise capital needed to online no we're not we're, we wouldn't be opposed to that um you know we're always we're always um it's always debt or equity so if we're going to do a debt we'll probably do a simple bond um or consider it in a in, a, in the form of a pref share of course um, so we're okay. not opposed to that. Okay. So so since you said you'd likely do a bond, okay, let, let, I'll, I'll just leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, paper plate is saying with, with everything now that is, you know, kind of pointing to an incoming recession, is a company preparing for a slowdown in terms of, I guess, business or, you know, any sort of risk management in light of what we may be seeing around us? Yeah, so I mean, contrary, contrary to popular belief, a recession brings a lot of opportunities as well. Um, you know, just as COVID, you know, COVID has made a lot of new businesses as well as it, it has destroyed a lot of businesses, you know. Um, so, you know, any form of economic shock um, does present some form of risk and opportunity at the same time. So I don't think that it will slow down it will cause for us to increase our risk mitigation and in terms of our underwriting, et cetera, be more robust in terms of the diversification of our loan portfolio, which we already have in place. As, it, as I mentioned, 70% 70, 70 of the book basically is secured. Um, so there is some form of recourse in the event that we need to you know, liquidate to get back our cash. Um, so, so we are always prepared for any shocker um, that might happen um so so uh, we're we're not we're not we don't feel threatened by it i think that it'll actually bring more business to dollar because once once there is something like a recession what you find is that commercial banks basically close their doors so persons who typically could go to a bank and get a loan the bank would be more you know not willing to take the risk and you know they could come to us with their collateral prove their cash flow and easily get a loan from us yeah yeah all right. Um, Craig is asking if persons default on loans to the point of non-recovery, how how will they dispose of their of their collateral? So basically, there is a procedure, um, especially for like property, where you know you have to value the property, um, advertise the property, you know, and um, and and that leads to the sale of a property, similar to a motor vehicle. So that's kind of like. Um, how we dispose of it. Um, we have the repossession stage um, leading up to right, to, right up to liquidation. Okay. I, I figure that's not your first choice. I guess it depends on, you know. Uh, I mean, typically, the truth is, um, Jermaine, typically once <laughs> once you said to somebody that you're coming to pick up the car, they find the money to pay the loan, you know. Yeah. Yeah, so. Yeah, that's that, that's the side of the business we'll talk about in the uh, <laughs> setting. Uh, Limitless Podcast is asking if there are any plans to partner with any hospitals in Jamaica for cosmetic loans. I think I mentioned before that we yes. we currently do that through our MediPay product. Um, so we do partner with a lot of um, private hospitals or private um, doctors who deliver cosmetic, whether it's braces, whether it's, um, you know, the more popular cosmetic surgeries um yeah. so so we actually do that currently okay okay all right Henneka is asking in in addition to building and maintaining relationships with his clients what other strategy do you employ to keep your default risk low 
I mean, relationship is one, and uh, the biggest one for us is um, the 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 security that is being used. Um, so one is the relationship. Um, you know, them have the five C's of credit, you know, your character, the collateral. Um, so we, we focus a lot on the collateral and how important that collateral is to the client, which will lead them to um, want to ensure that their payments are up to date. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, Sashin is asking if you can put a branch in St. Thomas. For sure. For sure. We're not leaving out St. Thomas. So give us, give us some time. Give us some time. Okay. Okay. All right. Troy and is saying, so I, I, I saw this in the group as well. So the 9% overall profit that you made reference, I think when we're talking about Guyana, Guyana, is it 9% of the half year profit? So kind of go through that again. I think there was a little, you know, confusion there. So we're talking about numbers for Guyana. Guyana, you mentioned it's about 150 million. Yeah. Um, so it would be, and, it would be 9% of, it would be 9% of 130 million, basically. That's where you'd get back like 12 million. So it would okay. be the year to date and not. So it'd be overall profit. So, I mean, if I pull up my calculator, I just did a rough mm -hmm. calculation, but 132, 9% of that is 11.8 million. So that's why I came up with the roughly. Um, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, so it's roughly around 9%. All right, try, try and hopefully that's clear. Let me know. Um, all right, so James saying this company looks nice. Um, and I I, its portfolio. <laughs> are there any other questions, guys? Let me know. Um, I think I think that's it. I'm not seeing anything else. Let me do a check in the group quickly and on Twitter. Let me just do a quick check there. What I'll ask you, Kadeen, in the meantime, any final thoughts, anything that then anything that you want to comment on as it relates to you know the 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 financials that maybe we missed just you know any final thoughts that you have for, for persons here um no i don't know final thoughts i just want to say that you know having um having this kind of forum to kind of have the shareholders be aware of you know whatever has been disclosed with the financials and having to give in, give them an opportunity to to really do a Q&A is really important to us and just to kind of engage with, you know, whether it's current or, or, or potential shareholders at a company. So um, you can expect us to, you know, use use a forum like Learn, Learn Grow, Invest um, to really connect with, with the public um, on a quarterly basis. Great, great. And, and, and it's something that we're hoping that more companies will agree to, to do these kind of discussions because I, I know for me I'd love to just have more information right this was something I was saying to 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 you earlier that I don't feel like as as investors we have enough information all right so yourself who have been making the rounds going and, and doing as many appearances as you can that helps what also helps is it probably us having access to those discussions and and that's why for us I know we're happy that we're on YouTube so everybody has access. The issue is maybe not everybody knows that you're having this interview right now. So there's still a, a lot of work to be done, but I'm happy that at least we're able to get this insight. It means more for us, I think, to have the discussion the way that we did today than just me going through the, the financials and putting what I think is is what's happening. It, it means more coming from you because you're the one running the company. So I definitely right. appreciate it. And I think this this helps investors understand the company a little bit more, and then they can make informed decisions that way. All right. Um, so Chantel is saying, not a question. She's just happy to grow with the company. Um, Limitless Podcast is asking, are, are there any plans for a rights issue when JSC raises the limit? There's There's been talks about raising the limit to 750. Are there any plans for rights? I guess, I guess when, when that comes up, we'll speak to our advisors and see if it fits. I mean, those talks have been in the pipeline for a while now. So, I mean, if it doesn't benefit us, I hope it will definitely benefit um, 
some new junior market companies are really looking forward to that. Yeah. And I think the final question here, Elrico is asking, any updates on your dividend policy? Um, no, I mean, it remains the same. Um, so I guess at the end of the day, the directors will determine that. And a big indicator for that is just to ensure that we have met the demands to grow the business and we have the cash in the bank to pay out to the shareholders. Okay, so what, when would it be that you're meeting to discuss it? So that maybe um, we can I, an update around that time. I mean, I mean, a declaration for a dividend is determined by the board. They can do mm -hmm. it um, a quart on a quarterly. They could have determined it this quarter or the next quarter or wait until okay. the financial year end. Um, so at the end of the day, it has to be strategic and in the interest of the operations of the company. Okay, okay. All right. Uh, well, I'm not seeing any more questions. If you are watching the replay and you have a question, just post it under the video on any platform that you're watching this from. We're streaming on Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, and Facebook. I'll also ask you to follow us on those platforms. Follow Dollar Financial as well. I think they're on all of those platforms as well, including LinkedIn. I know that I've been trying to grow our, our audience on LinkedIn. Not many conversations on investing on LinkedIn, but I know Twitter is very active. We do have a Facebook group. We have a Telegram group as well, but I'll ask you to join if you're not already in there. Kadeen is in our Telegram group. We've actually agreed to have uh, an informal discussion at some point. Um, so maybe we can work out the date for that, but I'm hoping that we can discuss maybe some, we, we, we have quite a bit of entrepreneurs in our group. We actually created a, an, an, an entrepreneurship directory so i'm hoping from like a business perspective maybe can give some some guidance you know how how to For sure. grow your business how to finance your business you know things like that i think would be interesting to discuss something you know kind of outside the usual investing discussion i thought that'd be helpful so we'll you know keep you posted on that um all right so i think that's it thank you so much kadeen really appreciate it thanks to the team as well all the persons working you know behind the scenes to make this happen you know who you are thank you so much and um yeah all the best I'd, i'll see you next quarter all right thanks for having me again jermaine okay. always a pleasure being on the show thank you thank you all right guys so any other questions you have post it in the comments below i'm going to share the link for the telegram group i want you to join us there so i'm going to share our link tree so you can get all of our links there. Feel free to connect with us and join our Telegram group if you're not already in it. Let me know how, how you liked this format. Um, I thought it would have been a little bit more meaningful to get you know feedback from the CEO himself. So let me know if you like this as opposed to our usual format. I think we got some more insights that we normally would have, but you know, I want to hear your feedback on it. Uh, we do have our next stock review and analysis this Wednesday. We're doing Sagicor Select Funds, so that's Select F and Select MD. We're going to be looking at those those companies. I know that's been one of those that's been in demand for a while, so we're going to talk about that. Um, so I'll see you then. And anything else, just you know, feel free to message us, send us a DM, or anything to that effect. All right, great, getting some feedback that you guys love it. Thank you so much. So really, it's about for you to tell us which companies you want us to do the reviews for. A lot of companies are going to be releasing soon. So let me know which ones. We want to make the conversations interesting and also at the same time not do the same interviews everybody else is doing. So hopefully we can kind of kind of mix it up so the discussion at least sounds a little different so that everybody is not kind of covering the same content um, as we, you know, try to make ourselves, you know, distinct in the space. Um, I'm seeing Namara saying he loves it. Great. Thank you guys for that, for that feedback. So let me know in the comments below the video which companies you want us to try to get contact with the CEO and have them join us for the next quarterly review. The stock reviews are going to be a, a little bit different um we'll still try to get interviews for those but we're trying to keep those personal for now because it's meant to kind of give you an overview of the company 
So maybe we won't have anybody join us for those, but at least for the, the Q2. <laughs> Lemar, we can't do all of them. So you have to be very specific, right? Um, CEOs can be very busy. So we kind of need to be um, kind of, you know, strategic. So if you, if, if you give me like five or 10 companies to work with, then I can, you know, reach out and try and, and manage that. But I don't know if I can reach out to over 100 companies. So, you know, let's see. All right. Um, Craig is saying NCB. All right. So I'll, I'll, I'll work on, on getting a contact for NCB. Um, for any other comment or feedback, leave it under the video or in the Telegram group or any platform, really. I'll, I'll get to it there. Thank you guys so much again. Um, I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Learning is the key to successful investing. And who doesn't want to invest in some way? Here at Learn Grow Invest, we focus on financial education, all with the aim of sharing our knowledge on personal finance, investing, and building wealth. We do this on the foundation of our faith in God. If a more holistic approach is what you need, check out our Grow Faith-Based Financial Coaching Program. Find out more about us at learngrowinvestclub.com and follow us on all social media platforms at Learn Grow Invest.